What do you need? Ask away. Such as they are. About the Grey Wardens, anyhow. Fair enough. What do you need? Yes? Something you need? Yes? What's on your mind? My mother was from Denerim, and I consider myself a Ferelden. Mother served an Orlesian noblewoman who lived here when Orle ruled. When Orle was defeated and the common folk began to resent the presence of any Orlesian, the lady returned to Orle. She took my mother with her. I was born in Orle and did not set foot in Ferelden till much later. Mother was always telling me stories of her homeland. I think she missed it. Mother died when I was very young. Lady Cecily let me stay with her. I had no one else. She was quite old then, and she had me study music and dance to entertain her. It is unfair that I have more memories of Cecily than my mother. Strangely, the only thing I really remember of mother was her scent. She kept dry flowers in her closet amongst her clothes. Small white Ferelden wildflowers with a sweet fragrance. Mother called them Andraste's Grace. They were very rare in Orle. But enough about that. Let us move on. Yes? Something you need? Yes? What's on your mind? I miss Valroyau. Unlike other cities where the people are the lifeblood and the character, Valroyau was her own person, and her people little more than decorations. There was always music in Valroyau, streaming from the many windows, quiet refrains and triumphant choruses, and always floating above that all, the chant, coming from the Grand Cathedral. It was magnificent. Yes, I'm sure it is, but every city has a different personality. It is hard to describe. You have to be there. Of course, there are good things and bad things about Orle, like anywhere else. Sometimes I miss it dearly, and sometimes I'm glad I'm rid of it. And you will laugh at this, but I miss the fine things I had in Orle. Dresses, fine dresses and furs, and shoes, of course. One can't mingle with nobility with bad shoes, you see. Orle is very fashionable. Almost ridiculously so. But the shoes! Living with those ridiculous trends was worth it for the shoes. <laughs> well, yes, but that's not all they're for. If you saw a pretty lady in a beautiful dress, you'd want to see her dancing in her dainty shoes and not in, in huge boots. Ugh, men. It seems women only dress up for other women because men don't care or notice. The shoes made in Orle were exquisite. Not at all like these clunky fur-lined leather boots you have in Ferelden. Ugh, just look at them. Thank you. It's kind of you to say so, even wearing these mud-covered horrors. They're sturdy shoes. But sometimes a girl just wants to have pretty feet. Oh, I could talk about shoes all day, but we have things to do, don't we? Yes? Something you need? Yes? What's on your mind? Of course I do. I love stories far too much to keep them to myself. Everyone should be able to benefit from them, I think. Chantry Law says it is man's pride that created the Darkspawn. In ages past, the mages of the Tevinder Imperium ruled much of the world we know. In their pride, they thought their magics invincible and imagined that they were greater than the Maker himself. So thinking, they invaded his golden city, planning to take it for themselves and depose their own creator. But they were impure and full of sin and it is with the sin that they tainted the golden city, corrupting it forever. The Maker cursed them, 
and cast them from his sight. Wherever they went, they spread the taint of their sin. Any land that was touched by the taint became blighted and would suffer no life. Instead, the darkspawn arose to torment us and remind us of our hubris. Of course, Olesians enjoy telling stories. I shall tell you my favorite tale of Aveline, the Knight of Ole. A long time ago, a girl child was born to a farmer. He had hoped for a son, not a daughter, and so he told his wife to abandon the child in the woods. Before the cold could claim her, the baby was found by a tribe of Dalish elves who took pity on the poor mewling thing and raised her as their own. Aveline, for that is what they called her, grew strong and quick and clever under the guidance of the elves. She learned to wield a sword as well as any man, could kill a deer with an arrow at hundred paces, and was as graceful on the back of a horse as she was on foot. Many legends have familiar forms and themes. We enjoy them so because we know them. Aveline's Dalish guardians saw that she could easily best any Olesian chevalier in battle and wanted to show the cruel humans the child they had left to die. They bestowed upon her a fine horse and armor and sent her to prove herself to her people in the Grand Tourney. Now in those days, no woman was allowed to take up arms, let alone compete in the Grand Tourney, but Aveline kept her helmet on and was not discovered. Aveline won many events and gained the approval of the adoring crowd. Eventually, she came face to face with the knight Kaleva in the Grand Melee. Aveline had already bested him in the joust, and Kaleva was determined not to lose a second time. Out of desperation to regain his honor, Kaleva tripped Aveline and tossed her to the ground, ripping off her helmet as he did so. Silence fell upon the arena as Aveline was revealed. Kaleva declared the previous competitions invalid. A woman had taken part, and this was not allowed. But the crowd cheered for Aveline. Kaleva was furious, for he had lost to a woman and was now being shamed. Blinded by his rage, he forced Aveline to her knees. Know your place, woman, cried he, and slit her throat. The son of the king, Prince Freyan, was present. He recognized Aveline's skill and bravery and began to see the injustice done to the women in his land. When he was made king, he rewrote the laws of Ole so that women could also become chevalier. He honored Aveline and knighted her after her death. And to this day, any female who is knighted reveres Aveline the Brave, for she is the patron of all women chevalier. I know one, told to me by my mother a long time ago, it always chilled me to the bone. Maybe you have heard of Flemeth? Ah, uh, are you sure? Was she THE Flemeth of legend? Flemeth, the devour of men. Flemeth, mother of witches. Flemeth, demon-touched, who dwells in the mists. Ferelden mothers scare their daughters with talk of Flemeth. They say that if you're bad, Flemeth will spirit you away and bind you to her forever. They also say that Flemeth mourns her lost beauty and will steal yours through your looking glass if she catches you. Flemeth's beauty was known throughout the land. She had hair like unto a moonless night, skin as pale as winter's first snow, and eyes as beautiful and perilous as the sea. When she came of age, she came to the attention of the Lord of Hyeva, Conobar, and he took her for his wife. Conobar soon learned that his young bride had the gift of magic. He kept this a secret, for he feared that she would be taken from him. Flemeth stayed with Conobar for some years, and with his blessing, she practiced her art. And then one day, a young poet named Osen came to the castle.
Flemeth was captivated by Othin's voice and he by her beauty, and they fell in love. Flemeth longed to be with her true love, and she and Othin fled from Conobar's lands, seeking refuge in the Kokari wilds with the Chasin tribes. They lived there happily for many a year, till the day Flemeth received news that Conobar was dying and longed to see her face one last time. Flemeth's heart swelled with pity for the man who once was her husband and begged Othin to return to Conobar's side with her. But when Flemeth and Othin entered Hyeva, they were captured by Conobar's men and Othin was slain in front of Flemeth's eyes. Flemeth was imprisoned in the highest tower of the castle, there to await Conobar's judgment on her. Distraught at the loss of her love, Flemeth plotted revenge against her husband. She summoned a fey demon, intending for it to wreak vengeance on Conobar. But a spell went awry. The demon possessed Flemeth. Turning her into an abomination, the halls of the castle ran red with blood as Flemeth slaughtered Conobar and all his men. The last of Flemeth's humanity melted away, and at dawn, she stole back to the wilds to plot and scheme for a hundred years. They say she took to her side many chastened men, and with their help, begat her daughter witches, who even now prowl the dark places of the Kokari wilds. Which one? I have heard a little about how the elves gained their freedom from the Tevinter Imperium. When Andraste began her exalted march against the Imperium, the elves joined her cause to fight their masters. The great elven leader, Shatan, born in captivity, rose up to lead his people. He foresaw a future where the elves were free. Shatan was killed when Andraste was betrayed but the elves continued to fight, eventually breaking free of the Imperium. The elves claimed the dales in the south and settled there in the land of their own. The elves lived in the dales for centuries. They resurrected the worship of the elven gods and would allow the building of no chantry. This angered the chantry, and the hostility between the two factions finally broke out in open war. The Chantry says the Elves struck first, but I do not know whether to believe it. The Chantry declared a wholly exalted march against the Elves, named for Andraste's similar march against the Winter. During the exalted march of the Dales, the Elven cities were sacked and the Elven state completely dissolved. Some of the Elves bitterly accepted their fates and surrendered to human rule, living in the human cities as second-class citizens. But others, still fiercely proud of their heritage, refused to bow to the humans, and instead became homeless wanderers. There were the elves of the Dales, the Dalish. Andraste was the Maker's chosen. The Maker had long since abandoned the world when the sound of her singing turned his ear. Beauty, grace and wisdom enraptured him, and he offered to take her from this flawed world to become his divine bride. But Andraste had an earthly husband and would not forsake him. Instead, she beseeched the Maker to return to his people once more. So earnest was her plea that the Maker was moved and promised that he would create a paradise on earth if all abandoned their false gods and turned once more to him. And this is why Andraste began her exalted march on the idolaters of the Tevinter Imperium. The Maker granted her his powers with which to smite her enemies. Andraste brought the Imperium to its knees, and her victories converted many to the worship of the Maker. Alas, it was the frailties of men that betrayed and killed Andraste. Her earthly husband, Maferath, a chieftain of the Alamari tribes himself, grew jealous as his wife's popularity and influence overshadowed his own. She was also revered as the Maker's betrothed, and Maferath began to see their own bond waning in significance as Andraste became ever more devoted to the Maker. Out of envy and spite, Maferath made a pact with the Archon Hesarian of Tevinta, allowing his beloved Andraste to be ambushed and captured. 
Andraste was burnt at the stake in Minrathus, the capital of Tevinta. The Tevinta Chantry claims that in Andraste's last moments, Hesarion's heart softened and he heard the voice of the Maker telling him to end her suffering. He plunged his sword into her heart, and as her blood washed over his hands, he became one of the faithful. Dissenters said that the Archon only converted because he could not stem the tide of Andraste's cult, and was forced to do so to stay in power. We will never know for sure. Yes? Something you need? Yes? What's on your mind? Where did you hear this? And you believe everything you hear? <laughs> Not all minstrels are spies. Most are just singers and storytellers. But some of them are... are what we call bards. Bards are minstrels and more. Spies, as you say. Some say there is a bard order, but I don't think this is true. Many bards work alone or in small groups, doing the bidding of a patron who pays for their services. If there is an organization behind it all, no one knows who they are. Nobles, mostly. In Orlais, there is much rivalry amongst the highborn. They fight over land, influence, and the favor of the empress. But they cannot do this openly because it is impolite, and in public, they wear smiling faces and pretend to be civil. In secret, they plot and scheme to destroy each other. It is a game completely meaningless to anyone but its players. I have revealed too much, it seems, but it doesn't matter what I used to be. It is the past. I found myself in Ferelden and sheltered from bad weather in the Chantry, and when the storm passed, I just did not want to leave. I like to say the Maker brought me here. Yes? Something you need? Mmm, that's an idea. I've watched you, and I do think you'd find some of my skills quite easy to pick up. Let's just go over there, away from the others, for safety, yes? I expect there shall be daggers flying about willy-nilly for a time. Yes? Something you need? Yes? What's on your mind? Yes. I am hardly surprised. Very well. Speak then. Then I suggest we move on. As you wish. I see it found some augmentation crystals. I was not even aware it knew about them. Well done. So, what does it think? They don't make me look any wider, do they? I find I'm already too wide as it is. It must be the vertical pattern it put them in. Did it know to do that? It must have. I think it should find some more as soon as possible. I want to glitter from ear to ear, so to speak. Oh. Oh, that. Merely reflecting on the hopeless nature of the task in front of it. The most likely outcome is that it and its companions will become a stain on some rock for the Darkspawn to tread upon. I shall be moved to a single tear by the tragedy. I think not. I am made of pure rock, skin to core. At best, I can become a pile of dust, but a smear I will definitely not leave behind. That's for softer, squishier things like itself and its friends. What's that? Did it hear flapping wings? There may be pigeons nearby. We should be alert. Ah. 
I see it found some old. So, what does it think? Ah, oh. the most likely outcome is that it and its companions will become a stain on some rock for the darkspawn to tread upon. I shall be moved to a sink. Oh, how adorable. Such hope is sweet to see, if a bit alarming. What's that? Did it hear flapping wings? There may be pigeons nearby. We should be alert. Oh. Yes, its adventures are interesting, even if the chances for success are remarkably slim. It would be better to throw oneself off a cliff, I suspect. Does it wish me to leave? I can, though I see no reason to go. No doubt. Without me, it would have to carry its inventory on its own. Perhaps we should continue. Its chances of success are small enough without further dawdling. Oh. Different? Different than what? Different than a statue? Different than a log? Should I talk in a monotone? Yes, Master, I exist to serve the Master. I shall kill for the Master and only for the Master. Perhaps it expected me to have a booming voice. Recite limericks. <laughs> I can recite limericks, if it likes. Mostly, they involve slaughtering pigeons in creative and invasive manners. I have never met another golem. I have no idea what one might be like, or why I wouldn't be like them. Why? Has it met other golems? Did they not sound as I do? I don't know what other golems might be like, but I am already superior by virtue of my free will. This is a good thing. So is being drawn and quartered. Maybe I'm not the only one with a smart mouth, hmm? Now stop talking so much. The wagging of its moist little tongue is distracting. Oh. It doesn't have better things to do. I like to think of them as accessories. I suspect that it is an art that was practiced when golems were more, um, commonplace. My former master collected whatever lore he could find on the subject. He searched far and wide to collect what crystals he could and then added them. It is not an unpleasant sensation. As I understand it, the crystals allow me to alter the flow of magic around me. Wilhelm had hoped to turn me into a battery of mana, something he could tap at will. Some of the crystals increase the presence of mana, some absorb or reflect spells. There are various kinds. All I can promise is that, should it ever find one of these crystals, I can likely tell it the function and what it would do if added to me. Why not? I don't get to wear clothing and other adornments like the rest of you creatures, after all. That answers its question, I assume? Unless it has more. Did I not already tell it that I do not remember doing such? I remember having a master. My memories of what happened to him are vague. Clever and true. Oh, very well. Let me see what I can recall. My former master enjoyed experimenting upon me. I remember that much. There was tinkering with spells and then the crystals. He was very eager to alter my function, I think. He possessed my control rod. 
and back then it would have prevented me from doing anything he did not command me to, no matter how I might have wished to. So what happened? I am unsure. He was experimenting, and then... nothing. And then he was gone. I was standing where I was, in the village, and I could no longer move. The villagers came, poked and prodded me in fear, and then realized they could neither move me nor destroy me. So they simply left me. And in time I forgot I hadn't stood there all along. Huh. Wonder? I was glad that he was gone. For so many years, I'd had to leap to that little toadstool's every command. Get this, pick up that, put it down, pick it up again. The gall! At first, I'd hoped he'd simply decided to leave me there paralyzed. An acceptable trade-off. After years passed, I simply stopped caring. Hmm. Possibly. Except that he was not experimenting with the crystals at the time, I think. But my memory is not good. It may be correct. Whatever the mage did seemed to render the control rod useless. For which I should be thankful, yes? And provided it doesn't decide to copy his experiments, not that I would allow it, it is nothing to fear for me. Much. The things that it fights, and it fights things often, that is a different story. Let us get back to the walking and the fighting. My stone is beginning to itch again. Oh. It doesn't have better things to do. Oh yes, that I remember quite well. My former master, the mage Wilhelm, he brought me. As I recall, he had acquired some position with whatever lord ruled the land. I, being little more than a glorified possession at the time, was brought along. Oh, how he enjoyed impressing the villagers with me. Gollum, snarl at that villager there. Be fearsome. And of course, I would have to do it. <sighs> I traveled with the mage. He did a lot of traveling, I remember that. But where we went? It is rather fuzzy. I remember great battles, fighting many humans long ago. They were all very soft and squishy. And before that, I... No, there are only images. I was somewhere dark. That is where Wilhelm kept me. He wanted me out in the open where I could be frightening like a scarecrow. I was supposed to watch for thieves. Pah! Plus, his wife didn't want me indoors. She said there wasn't room for me. Hag. Hmph! I was once larger, ten feet tall. Then the loathsome hag complained that I couldn't fit through the doors. So the mage had me shrunk down, shrunk down! Can it believe it? and she still wanted me out. With a chisel, and a lot of nerve. He did love using that control rod. Fondled it so much, his wife actually threatened to throw it in the lake. Ha! <laughs> I would have liked to have seen that. Which reminds me, where did it find the rod? Did it pay a great deal for it? Hag. I'd have happily stomped them all into paste, and then ripped down their little houses and stomped on them, too. In fact, after thirty years of watching them, I'd do it twice. What I didn't like was being ordered to do it. Dangled in front of those frightened morons like some... scary thing. Once I was a statue, it took those villagers years before they'd even approach me. 
the first one to actually work up the nerve to touch me urinated himself. Ugh. Good. I was just about done talking about it. It does like to have a good chat now and again, doesn't it? If there's anything I can do for you, please, please tell me. Habron, daughter of the Earl of Southreach, has spent an exorbitant amount of her father's coin buying puppies. No one knows what happens to the puppies, and she buys a new one every week. That's what I've heard on the road, anyhow. Take it for what it is. Of course. Good fortune to you and yours. Goodbye. Yes? So, full of questions, are you? <laughs> yes? We are in camp, so tis as good a time as any. Discuss away. And your friends are formidable folk indeed it's good to have you along on the road i'm sure you'll be pleased
I am impressed. My thanks. Oh, how dear of you. Thank you so much. Ooh, shiny. Indeed. Yes. Indeed. What can I do for you, Warden? Certainly. Warden? Warden? This... This is star metal. If you give this to me, I will craft for you a thing of legend. Nothing. My family owes you much. And so it shall be. It is done. I call this blade Starfang. May it serve you well. I must rest after my exertions. Warden? Look, can we talk for a moment? I need to tell you something. I um, should probably have told you earlier. I told you before how Al Eamon raised me, right? That my mother was a serving girl at the castle and he took me in? The reason he did that was because... Well, because my father was King Marek. Which made Kaelin my... Half-brother, I suppose. Ha! 
<laughs> yes, I guess it does at that. I should use that line more often. I, I would have told you, but it never really meant anything to me. I was inconvenient, a possible threat to Kaylin's rule, and so they kept me secret. I'd never talked about it to anyone. Everyone who knew either resented me for it or they coddled me. Even Duncan kept me out of the fighting because of it. I didn't want you to know as long as possible. I'm sorry. Why wouldn't he? He was King Marek's best friend. I don't know if that means anything, though. I certainly never considered the idea that it might ever be important. At any rate, that's it. That's what I had to tell you. I thought you should know about it. Let's hope not. I'm the son of a commoner and a Grey Warden to boot. It was made very clear to me early on that there was no room for me raising any rebellions or such nonsense. And that's fine by me. No, if there's an heir to be found, it's Al Eamon himself. He's not of royal blood, but he is Kalin's uncle, and more importantly, very popular with the people. Though, if he's really as sick as we've heard... Oh, no, I, I, I don't want to think about that. I really don't. So there you have it. Now can we move on? And I'll just pretend you still think I'm some nobody who was too lucky to die with the rest of the Grey Wardens. Some nobody who was too lucky to die with the rest of the Grey Wardens. Welcome to the club. And I'm off. I thought I saw travelers coming down the road, though I scarcely believed it. Have you come to help us? The Arl? Then you, you... you don't know? Has nobody out there heard? He could be dead for all we know. Nobody's heard from the castle in days. We're under attack. Monsters come out of the castle every night and attack us until dawn. Everyone's been fighting and dying. Apparently everyone seems to agree that a blight is the perfect time to start killing each other. Marvelous, really. We've no army to defend us. No Arl and no king to send us help. So many are dead. And those left are terrified they're next. Hold on, what is this evil that's attacking you? I, 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 I don't rightly know. I'm sorry, nobody does. I should take you to Ban Tegan. He's all that's holding us together. He'll want to see you. Ban Tegan, our Lehman's brother, he's here. Yes. It's not far, if you'll come with me. It's Thomas, yes? And who are these people with you? They are obviously not simple travelers. No, my lord. They just arrived, and I thought you would want to see them. Well done, Thomas. Greetings, friends. My name is Tegan, Ban of Rainersphere, brother to the R. I remember you, Ban Tegan, though the last time we met, I was a lot younger and covered in mud. Covered in mud? Alistair? It is you, isn't it? You're alive! This is wonderful news. Still alive, yes. Though not for long if Tern Loghain has anything to say about it. Indeed. Loghain would have us believe all Grey Wardens died along with my nephew, amongst other things. What, that he pulled his men in order to save them? That Kaelin risked everything in the name of glory? <laughs> Hardly. Loghain calls the Grey Wardens traitors, murderers of the King. I don't believe it. It is an act of a desperate man. So you are a Grey Warden as well. A pleasure to meet you. I wish it were under better circumstances. You're here to see my brother. 
Unfortunately, that might be a problem. Eamon is gravely ill. No one has heard from the castle in days, no guards patrol the walls, and no one has responded to my shouts. The attack started a few nights ago. Evil things surged from the castle. We drove them back, but many perished during the assault. Some call them the Walking Dead, decomposing corpses returning to life with a hunger for human flesh. They hit again the next night. Each night they come with greater numbers. With Kaelin dead and Loghain starting a war over the throne, no one responds to my urgent calls for help. I have a feeling tonight's assault will be the worst yet. Alistair, I hate to ask, but I desperately need the help of you and your friends. It isn't just up to me. Though the Grey Wardens don't stand much chance against Loghain without Arl Eamon. I know Alistair, and I trust those he chooses to travel with. What do you say? How pointless to help these villagers fight an impossible battle. One would think we had enough to contend with elsewhere. Thank you. Thank you. This means more to me than you can guess. Thomas, please tell Murdoch what transpired. Then return to your post. Yes, my lord. Now then, there is much to do before night falls. I put two men in charge of the defense outside. Murdoch, the village mayor, is outside the Chantry. Sir Perth, one of Eamon's knights, is just up the cliff at the windmill, watching the castle. You may discuss with them the preparations for the coming battle. This is hardly the time to be discussing personal details, don't you think? We will have to fight for our lives very shortly. I suppose that's not too much to ask. I did not mean to be brusque. I don't know. If Connor lives, he'll be the Arl and I'll need to help him with it. If he's... well, I don't want to think about that. After the first attack, I wanted to go for help, but I couldn't just leave these people. The Bannon gear up to battle Loghain while Darkspawn loom to the south. Loghain won't send anyone, so Redcliffe is on its own. Skilled enough to know there are many far better than myself. Good, then my secrets are still safe. I was worried for a moment there. Are you suggesting what's happened here is related to Kaelin's death and the Civil War, even Eamon's illness? No, I do not. I arrived recently myself, having heard the news. I know as much as you do now. Our sister was Kaelin's mother. I suppose we've royal blood, but it's a shaky claim to the throne, though still better than Loghain's. And it does mean Eamon could intervene in Loghain's bid for the throne, but let's not leap to conclusions. I would not like to think that anyone would wish this on my brother. He is a good man and much loved by the people of Redcliffe. And I can't imagine how terrible it must be for our lesser Isolde, and especially Connor. I would not want him to lose his father at such a young age. I have those few who returned from their quest. You know of this, yes? Yes, I question Isolde's decision to send so many knights in search of this relic. But I am a practical man, whereas she is a woman of great faith. Sir Perth was one of the knights sent on this quest. Perhaps you should speak to him if you wish to learn more. Sir Perth insists. He wants me to be with the villagers, so everyone he needs to protect is in one place. I don't mind, to be honest. The point of all this is to protect the villagers, and I can do that best here. This is the last line of defense, should things go amiss. Should the monsters find their way in? I would prefer not to fight in the Chantry, but if they come, then so must it be. We could bring some men in to stand beside me, but I'd rather keep the monsters away from the villagers if possible. Hopefully we can find the source and stop it before it causes any more damage. With luck, we'll also find Eamon and be able to help him. I do not know. They seem to be walking corpses, men with rotting flesh that continue to attack even with the gravest injuries. Undead, 
Spirits possessing the dead. There could be several causes behind such a thing, none of them pleasant. Very well. Luck be with you, my friend. I'm scared, Mother. When are the bad men I'm so scared, me? Father. Soon, what are we going to do? Silence, girl. Do you want the children to hear you? But night is coming. The monsters will return and we sit here and wait for them. We have no choice. We must pray and hope for the Maker's compassion. I just hope everything will be all right. So many have already died. To think I'd live to see the Arl and King both dead, and my own village ready to fall. The Blight comes again, and Ferelden is doomed. What are we to do? Sorry, am I bothering you? I'll, I'll try to be more quiet. Those... Those things dragged my mother away. I don't know what happened to her, but I hear her screaming all the time, everywhere. How terrible, you poor thing. I wish there was something we could do to help. And now my brother Bevan, he, he ran off. I, I don't know where he is. I'm so scared they got him too. He said something about saving mother. He's just a little boy. He doesn't understand she's gone. If he has foolishly run off, then he is no doubt dead. You should get used to that fact. Nice. Maybe you want to kick her in the head while you're at it. Shall we comfort her with lies? If she is to face death, better she face it honestly. I hope he didn't try to go to the castle. Oh, that would be awful. I went to her house. It's by the square. He wasn't there. I searched the rest of the village, too. I called and I called, but he never answered. I, I wonder if he ran off into the woods. I'm so worried. Without me, he has nobody. You will. Thank you so much. Please find him. You're a Grey Warden, right? Were you in Ostagar? In the Kokari Wilds? My husband and son went there to bring the Chant of Light to the Chastened. But I haven't heard from them since. I am. You've heard of me? I... I thought that might be the case. Thank you for telling me. Maker's blessings upon you. Good day. What will we do? Night approaches and our men are outside ready to die for us. I want to go home. When will this be over? What do you need? There is not much daylight left. Of course. Very well. Luck be with you, my friend. What do you need? There is not much daylight left. What would you like to know? Ask away. Good, then my secrets are still safe. I was worried for a moment there. Very well. Luck be with you, my friend. Let us pray. Blessed hmm. art thou who exists in the Maker's sight. Blessed art thou who seeks his forgiveness. Blessed art thou who seeks his return. Blessed is the prophetess, his daughter, sacrificed to the Holy Flame. May the chant reach the Maker's ears and tell him of our contrition. You are of dwarven blood and a stranger amongst us, yet you defend a home that is not your own. We are grateful for that. Which doesn't include protecting innocence. Regardless, I am grateful the Maker brought you to us. Allow me to introduce myself. I am revered Mother Hannah, 
head of this chantry, which for the moment is a place of refuge for these poor villagers. How awful this must be for you all. Is this everyone who's left? All those who cannot defend themselves, yes. They are terrified of tonight's attack, and I fear these walls will not keep them safe. What can I do to help with your task? It is the sturdiest building in the village. The women, elderly and children will stay here during the battle, while the militia and knights protect them. They set up a barricade outside the Chantry to keep monsters from getting inside. If anything gets in, Van Tegan is our only defense. Please, have mercy. Help these people. Do whatever you can. May the Maker watch over you, child. I do not want to become one of those things dragged off and made into a monster. Why haven't mother and father returned yet? They're... They're gone, dear boy. Gone on a long trip. When will they be back? I miss them. Be brave, young man. Your parents would want that. We need you here to protect the rest of us. Yes? I guess I can do that. There's a good lad. In the morning, we'll look for your parents. In the morning. I don't like being in here when the monsters come. Everybody gets really scared. I fear most for the children. They are so frightened. It breaks my heart. What is that smell? Fish? And something else. Oh, more fish. You know, we don't have the men we need. And their numbers just keep growing each night. Well, sure, they take the dead and they, you know... I don't want to think about that. I guess this might be the last night after all. The king isn't coming. Nobody is. So what can we do? Leave? Try to get out of the village? And abandon everyone? No, we fight. We've no other choice. I can't believe how cowardly and selfish Twin is being. I'm telling the missus he doesn't deserve her blackberry tarts anymore. Still no sign of them coming back from the castle, Murdoch. Tell them to maintain watch. I don't want a surprise attack before the sun goes down. Yes, sir. What should we do until then? Pray, and hope for a miracle. So you're the Grey Warden, are you? I heard they all died with the King. Could be that I did. We aren't gonna turn aside anyone who wants to help, though. Don't take me for being an ingrate or nothing. Well, we do want to help however we can. You can trust us. Name's Murdoch, mayor of what's left of the village, providing we aren't all killed and hauled off to the castle tonight. I... I hope you're right. I've been trying to hold us together, but it isn't easy. Anyhow, you're here, and they tell me you're in charge. Morale's about what you'd expect. These men aren't soldiers. They're villagers defending their homes, and they're frightened. It would help if we had decent equipment. There weren't enough swords in Owen's shop, and the men's armor is nearly falling off. I don't think we're in any shape to fight. We'll do our best, of course, but, well, I have my doubts. I just hope I'm alive tomorrow morning. We need what little armor and weapons we got repaired, and quickly, or half of us will be fighting without either. Owen's the only blacksmith who can do it, but the stubborn fool refuses to even talk, if we're to be ready for tonight, we'll need that crotchety bastard's help. His daughter, Valena, is one of the Alessa's maids, so he hasn't heard from her since this whole business started. 
He demanded we attack the castle, break down the gate, and force our way in. I said it was impossible, but he wouldn't listen. He's locked himself in the smithy now. I can't force him to do repairs. He said he'd rather die first. Not by nightfall, and not well enough that I'd be happy to test it in combat. If there were others, don't you think I'd ask them? We could use some extra bodies. Having a veteran like Dwin in the militia would help a lot, but he flat out refuses. He's a trader, a dwarf, lives near the lake, locked himself up in his home with some of his workers, he has. Says he doesn't need any of us. We could use somebody with his fighting experience, but he won't come out. Shouldn't you be trying to reason with Owen? Oh? Ask away? Hmm. If you want weapons and such, you'd go to the blacksmith, but there isn't much left there. Ah, uh, commerce isn't exactly our biggest concern right now, but you might want to speak to Lloyd at the tavern. I wouldn't trust him, though. Don't rightly know. We heard the Arl was sick and getting worse, but after a while we heard nothing at all. A few folks went up to the castle to see what was going on. They couldn't get in. Nobody was there, not a soul. And then those horrid creatures attacked the village. They were everywhere, people dying. It was awful. Good thing Bantigan was here. No. I know the Arlesa sent the knights out for a cure. You can ask Sir Perth about it. He was one of them. Shouldn't you be trying to reason with Owen? Oh? Ask away. We're the last defenders of them folks in the Chantry. The women, elderly, and the children. They're the ones we need to protect. No matter what happens, we can't let them evil things in there. If they die, the village is done. Shouldn't you be trying to reason with Owen? Oh? Ask away. Shouldn't you be trying to reason with Owen? Don't drink. Yes. And I'm off. Allow me. I could do that for you. Allow me. I could do that for you.
Wonderful. Intruders. I hope you have a good reason for breaking and entering into my home. No, no. Have to run the place. It's not like I could stop people like you anyway. The name's Dwin. Pleased to meet you. Now, kindly tell me why you're here. Surviving. We have supplies to last for quite some time. And my boys and I can swing a weapon better than any of those fools out there. Sure it does. Here I have my own supplies, my boys for protection, and I live and die on my own terms. So, that's what it comes down to, huh? <laughs> Fine. I'll go. If you want me out there so badly. Huh. <laughs> Spoken like someone who doesn't know me very well. Go tell Murdoch he won. And I better see you out there in the square when those creatures come. Go away. This isn't your home. This is my home. My home, you hear me? How... How do you know my name? Did... Did she tell you to take me back to the Chantry? Don't make me go back there. I hate that place. I hate it. Everybody's scared. But they tell me... I shouldn't be scared. And they tell me I shouldn't be sad that Mother died. I... I don't want to be sad. I'm brave. I'm going to be a hero. I'm going to fight them off. I will. No. No. I just heard you coming and I guess that's not very brave of me, is it? I'll... I'll come out now. All right, I came out. You won't hurt me, will you? I'll go back to the Chantry if you really want. Yes, it was my mother's house. She's dead now. And Caitlin said we have to move away if we survive. I... I can't tell you. It's a secret. You could. All right, I guess. I just... Father said I could have his sword when I grew up. It was Grandfather's. And Grandfather was a great dragon slayer. I thought... If I was brave like Grandfather, I could use his sword and... Kill the bad people who took Mother. No, well, maybe the sword was too heavy for me. I guess I'm not as strong as I thought I was. In the chest, in Mother's room, Father gave me a key, but I'm not supposed to give it to anyone. You could? Maybe you could... 
give my sister money? She said if we had money, we'd be all right, even if mother is dead. I... I guess you're right. I should help defend the village, shouldn't I? Father would have if he were here. Oh, all right. Here's the key. I hope you use it to kill a lot of those bad people. I should go back to the Chantry. Good luck. Hmm. Yes. Stop fidgeting. I don't like being out here, Dwin. The mayor's giving me the evil eye. And well he should. Because you're a good-for-nothing liar and a thief. Well, we don't understand why we're out here. We're out here because I say we're gonna help these people. And since I pay your wages, you're gonna do as I say. Oh, sure, boss. Whatever you say. Evan said you were the one who found him. I can't possibly repay you. Evan told me about Grandfather's sword. So you have it then? I suppose it won't go to waste, at least. I have no idea what it's worth, to be honest. And you found Bevan. I couldn't ask you for money. F thank you. That's certainly a lot of coin. How can I ever repay you? The Maker sent you. I just know it. Thank you again. These humans don't know the hilt of a sword from the pointy end. This ought to be interesting. All right. You are very beautiful, Morrigan. Tell me something I do not know. But you are always dressed in such rags. It suits you, I suppose. A little tear here, a little rip there to show some skin. I understand. You understand I lived in a forest, I hope. Maybe we could get you in a nice dress one day. Silk. No, maybe velvet. Velvet is heavier, better to guard against the cold in Ferelden. Dark red velvet. Yes. With gold embroidery. It should be cut low in the front, of course. We don't want to hide your features. Stop looking at my breasts like that. It is most disturbing. You don't think so? And if it's cut low in the front, 
We must put your hair up. Show off that lovely neck. You are insane. I would sooner let Alistair dress me. It'll be fun, I promise. We'll get some shoes too. <gasps> shoes. We could go shopping together. Where are you going? I thought you were going to help us. If you go, I doubt we'll still be here when you get back. I'm just saying. So, this thing you and him have going, doesn't that violate your vows? What? What kind of question is that to just blurt out? What do we have going? Yes, I'm that blind. I so totally did not see you ogling each other before. He was not ogling me, was he? Was he really ogling me? Well, now that you say it, I'm not sure. Maybe he wasn't ogling you. I don't know. I could always ask him. You can't do that. Could you? You couldn't do that. I could, but I won't. Next thing you'll have me pulling his hair and passing him love letters. I... just mind your own business. How inappropriate. Hmm. Yes, what can I do for you? I knew this time would come. I should have listened to my wife. Don't sign that paper, she said. They might pay you a few sovereigns now, but they'll be back. Blast. I'll see you on the front lines, I suppose. Go away. Curse you. Leave me in peace. You've already taken everything out of my stores. There's nothing left. Just don't destroy anything, damn you! Make his breath. What is that smell? It's like someone set a brewery on fire. Somebody's been drinking. So, I open the door. I've got nothing of value for you. The militia's taken whatever I had. So if you're here to beat on a sad old man, then all I ask is you get on with it. I don't have much to live for as it is.
Is that so? Then talk then. Look around. The militia took everything they could use. I could start up the forge again, but I won't, since Murdoch won't listen to me. If you mean you want me to smith something for you, then no. But feel free to take whatever's left. Don't suppose it matters much anymore. You mean why are these creatures attacking the village? Obviously something wicked corrupts the castle. My daughter used to tell me the Arlesa was up to something, hiding things from her husband. I told Velena she was imagining things. But maybe the Arlesa was involved in something. Blood magic, maybe. Of course not. And who would I tell? And what good would it do now, eh? I just wish I'd paid more heed to my girl. I'd never make such accusations, but maybe if she was using foul magic, then maybe she just did at that. Only that she's an Orlesian girl from beyond the Western Mountains. Far too young for our all. That's what I say. And too proud and edge strong from the sounds of it. She thought the Arlesa was having an affair with some tutor she hired for the boy, Connor. I never listened much to her talk about it. Though I wish now I had. It doesn't matter anyway. She's lost to me. And I can't do anything about her warnings now. Like what? My girl, Velena, is one of the Alessa's maids and she's trapped up there in the castle, but the mayor won't send anyone for her. She's been my life since my wife passed on two years ago. Now she's dead, or soon to be. I don't care what happens to me or the village or anyone. I'm an old man. Everyone knows we aren't making it through the night. Or are you going to save us? Is that so? Hmm. Maybe it's the drink talking, but you almost sound like you believe that. It'd do me the world of good to think maybe someone like you could go in and find her. Provided any of us live through the night. If you look for Velena, I'll reopen the smithy and make some repairs for the militia. I can do that much. It would be better than going to my grave wondering. Not good enough. Murdoch said the same damned thing, and I didn't believe him either. You are asking a great deal, you wretched little man. I want a promise. Promise me that you'll look for her. That you'll bring her back to me if you can. Eventually, they want to seek out the Arl and our lesser. And when they do, you go in and bring my Velena to me. I'll accept that. It's something to hope for, at least. Oh, lovely. Shall we next begin rescuing kittens from trees? Right then. It seems I have some work to do relighting the forge, and I suppose I'll have to find some iron. Hmm, maybe at the mill. Oh, Murdoch just better send his men here as soon as possible if I'm going to get to all these repairs and get them done by nightfall. If you need anything done, well, just let me know. I've got a lot to do now, so you'll have to excuse me. Hey, I see you found my hiding place. I stuck some old equipment in there before Murdoch could get his hands on it.
I don't think there's anything you'll need in there. But it's hard to say. I was in a bit of a rush when I filled it up. Not if I'm going to repair the equipment they have. That stuff is old, anyhow. Yeah, let me open it for you. I have the key. I must admit, it feels good to be up and doing something finally. There's no way I'm sobering up before morning, however. Right. I haven't got much, obviously, but I'll do whatever I can for you. I must admit, it feels good to be up and to... Another doomed soul come to drown their sorrows here, I see. If you came here for a drink, you'll have to talk to Lloyd. He's got a vice grip on the spigots. I'm just here to keep the boys from mutiny. Not much. He's very quiet. Says his name's Beric and he's here to meet his brother, but I think he's lying. He's a bit... creepy. What business? Without the castle soldiers, the only customers we have are local. And they're all in the militia with no money to spend. The few with any money are here, but it's not enough to justify working. Lloyd's a... greasy pig. And if I didn't need this job so badly, I... Oh, you think I'm pretty, do you? That's really sweet of you. Thank you. Later on, yes. Lloyd will lock himself in the cellar, and I'll go to the Chantry. Are you... fighting tonight? That's... good to hear. I didn't know that. Keep safe. I can't believe Lloyd won't even give us some free ale. A time like this, and all he thinks about is turning a profit. Did you expect any different? That bastard's always been cheaper than an ant tea from the hall. Here we are defending the village, and he don't even have the decency to help us out. I've seen Lloyd handle a sword. He should stick to something he knows about, like keeping me nice and drunk for the fight. Lloyd is charging us for coin we don't even got anymore. Nobody's working right now. We're all just trying to survive. Ah, what difference does it make? He won't care.
Hello there, friend. Can't say we've ever met before. Stranger to the village, I take it. Haven't had many travellers lately. All this nonsense is bad for business. Bet you regret coming, yes? Oh, you know, evil creatures, impending doom, civil war, and the Earl's dead in the castle. Makes you thirsty, don't it? So, what'll it be? You are here to drink, I hope. Right, I've got some supplies too, in case you're interested. With the store closed down, it doesn't hurt to pick up some of the slack, eh? Hey, what can Lloyd get you? Name's Lloyd. We don't get many dwarves out here. Occasional trader, maybe. You're a smith. I hear old Owen could use a replacement. That's so. Good for him. Guess that means he doesn't need you, doesn't it? Something else I can get for you? Fine. Make them quick. I'm not abandoning my tavern because of a few monsters. The second I'm in the Chantry, Murdoch and his men will be here drinking all my ale. Not a lot. Castle guards stopped coming in about a week back. It's unusual, too. They were my main source of business. After a few days, I thought it strange enough to ask. But nobody heard anything. Anyone going up to the castle didn't come back. When the first attack hit, I locked myself in the cellar. I say we just wait for help to come. Not much. Says his name's Berwick. Arrived here more than a week back. Waiting for his brother, he says. I've never seen him before, but he paid good for his room. Quiet sort. I'm not abandoning my tavern because of a few monsters. The why? When them creatures attack, I lock myself in the cellar, just batten the hatches and wait it out. What's the point in getting myself killed with all the rest of them? If that makes me a coward, then I'm a coward. But Van Tegan said we didn't have to. He said, he said... Ah, fine, fine, I'll go. But all of this better be here when I get back. I don't want a place drunk out from under me. Blasted bloody... Not looking for company. Why? I don't live here. Just waiting until I can leave again. What? How did you know that? Uh, well, that's my name. Why? I... no reason. I just didn't know how you knew my name. That's all. My what? Oh, yes. He was supposed to meet me here. And then I got stuck here when monsters from the castle attacked. Uh, no. Those who tried are dead. And, um, I, uh, have to wait for my brother. Look, I don't know you, and I don't want to. I'm not... I mean, I was just told to... I mean, just leave me alone. Nothing. Nobody told me to do anything. Just because you're a Grey Warden doesn't mean you can go around threatening people. If I... But I never... 
Oh, all right, I'll tell you. Just... just don't hurt me. This is more than I bargained for. Look, they just paid me to watch the castle and send word if anything should change. But they never said anything about monsters. I haven't even been able to report anything since this started. I'm stuck, same as you, I swear! Just to report any changes, honest. All I could send word about was the Arl getting sick. After that, monsters started coming from the castle. A tall fellow, I forget his name. He, uh, said he was working for Hal. Arl Rendon Hal. He's an important man, Terran Loghain's right hand. So I didn't do anything wrong. Here, this is a letter from them. It has instructions and everything. Keep it, do whatever you want with it. I just thought I was serving the king and making a bit of coin on the side. You have to believe me. Oh, all right. I'll do it. Thank you for your mercy. I won't forget it. I hear they got everyone in the castle. And now everyone who died. I see you got that bastard Lloyd to join the militia. It's about time he did something to help out. I guess this puts me in charge. <laughs> Poor Lloyd will have an apoplexy just thinking about it, eh? <laughs> Lloyd wouldn't care much for that. It's an excellent idea. You hear that, boys? Drinks for the militia are on the house. Ha <laughs> ha! You're on the best time! You just keep us all safe, boys. And stay alive. What business? <laughs> I close up, but it gives the militia a place to take their minds off tonight. Me too, I suppose. Keep safe and come back any time. I won't lock up until near sundown. What can I get you? Fair enough. Let me see what Lloyd stored in the back. You can help yourself. That's mighty kind of you to help us. We thought nobody would comply. I can't believe I'm going to fight. That's what I get for mixing myself up in all this. Well, I'm here. I'm cold. I'm certainly gonna die. Hope you I hear you got the tavern serving the militia free ale now. While I don't favor my men being drunk come sundown, I suppose it helps morale to have their minds taken off. What's to come? You have my thanks. Well, it looks like Owen's finally doing the repairs we need. The damn fool is falling over a drunk and still manages to make smithying look easy. Good enough, I say. I'll inform Bantig and the militia is ready to fight. We'll give those bastards a welcome they won't soon forget. The men's spirits are high for now. Far better than I expected, to be honest. Dwin's presence makes the men a bit more confident. It helps to know a veteran is on our side tonight. My men are getting free drinks at the tavern. I suppose it's better to drown your fears rather than go mad waiting for certain death. I'm tempted to have a few ales myself. Since you convinced Owen to start repairs, we're pretty well armed now. That is a relief, let me tell you. Overall, I'd say the militia's very ready to fight. Never thought I'd say that, but there you go. Is there anything else?
Oh, ask away. There's not much time before sundown. You'll find him and his men at the mill by the bridge, to the north. I have a good feeling about tonight. No word from the castle? No, all is still, as it has been for days. And it is an unnatural stillness, as though there is naught in there but death. Say no more. The Arl lives, and I will not listen to your inauspicious chatter. It is good you elected to help defend the village. But I doubt we will make it through the night. We're glad that you are here helping us. Perhaps you will make a difference. So I understand the Ard's brother placed you in charge of the village's defense. Ah, oh, it's sort of like coming home again, but with more undead. Of all the... Greetings, Grey Warden. I am as relieved as Ban Tegan is to see you here. I must admit I am unfamiliar with addressing a dwarf of your station. I do not wish to be rude. As you wish, and thank you kindly. I am Sir Perth, until recently in direct service of Arl Eamon of Redcliffe. For now my charge is defending the village from these evil assaults. Would that I had chosen not to seek out the urn of sacred ashes. Perhaps I would have fended off whatever evil befell the castle. Or perhaps I would be dead. Ah, well, with a great warden aiding our defence, perhaps all is not lost. No one told me of this. Oil, you say? How much, exactly? Assuming that would hurt them. Yes, I see what you have in mind. That might be effective, if used carefully. Yes, excellent idea. I'll send some men to collect the oil. We'll use it to slow these creatures down. Have you anything else to ask me in the meantime? We have sufficient armor and weapons, but my knights are too few to stand against the monsters without assistance. Perhaps you could approach Mother Hannah in the Chantry for some holy protection against these evil creatures. Otherwise, I do not know what else you could provide beyond your own talents. We're as prepared for the onslaught as we could possibly be, all things considered. No, nothing comes to mind. If you have not spoken to the Mayor, Murdoch, you should. His militia is far more in need of aid than we are. Ask me whatever you wish. I'm not sure. Murdoch mentioned a blacksmith in the village, but I believe the militia is using everything he had. Beyond that, you might try the village store. It's locked up, but there may be items of use still within. I do not know. Ugh, a fellow named Lloyd runs it. He refuses to close and evacuate to the Chantry. I suppose he might still have something to sell you, though I wouldn't encourage dealing with a fool. He's a profiteer and nothing more. When the Isle fell sick, we were at a loss. Nothing worked to cure him, and he just kept getting worse. Finally, our lesser Isold came up with a plan. The urn of sacred ashes is a legendary artifact set to hold great healing powers. If found, it might save him. They say the followers of Andraste smuggled her ashes out of Tevinter and hid them in Ferelden. The urn's never been heard of since. We knights volunteer to seek it out. Few of us have returned. Many are still out there, unaware of what is happening here. We were never certain. He thirsted for water and then grew weaker and weaker. He brought in a mage, but even that did nothing. The Alessa believed he was cursed and that we needed the power of Andraste herself or he would surely perish. 
The owl once employed a scholar, Brother Genetivi. He had proof the urn was in Ferelden, or so I was told. Eventually, perhaps. The ones I have here were those near enough to recall within the last few days. I only returned myself because I was passing by Redcliffe and heard the news of strange attacks. Not at all. A great number of soldiers remained in Castle Redcliffe. I wonder if they perished there and were transformed into these things. The thought chills my blood. As you wish. We retrieved more oil from the village store. It is ready to use as our first line of defense, as you suggested. Overall, my fellow knights are nervous about the coming battle. Death is almost certain, but we will fight and die valiantly if that's what the Maker demands. Ask me whatever you wish. When the Isle fell sick, we were at a loss. Nothing worked to cure him, and he just kept getting worse. Finally, our lesser Isold came up with a plan. The Urn of Sacred Ashes is a legendary artifact set to hold great healing powers. If found, it might save him. They say the followers of... We knights volunteered to seek it out. Few of us have returned. As you wish, Grey Warden. Make a watch over you. Yes. The tavern keeper is letting the militia drink as much ale as they please. What is it you need, child? I have done all I can for them. I pray for them each night and seek the Maker's forgiveness for their sins before they face their deaths. What Sir Perth seeks is something that is not in my power to give. I can pray with them and give them my blessing, but Sir Perth wants me to call upon the Maker to shield them from evil. Well, can't you just tell him the Maker will watch over him? Morale is a powerful thing, you know. You mean you want me to let them think the Maker protects them in a real sense? I will not lie to them like that. I suppose if they believed in the Maker's power, that belief would inspire them somewhat. It, it just seems like trickery. Very well. If it keeps them alive, I will do what I must. I have a number of silver cast holy symbols. Tell Sir Perth that he can have them, and that wearing them will confer the Maker's protection. Now please, let me tend to these poor folk. I must do what I can, and I suggest you do the same. I hear both Murdoch and Sir Perth are ready for nightfall. Excellent news. Of course. Very well. Luck be with you, my friend.
and I'm off. The Knights of Redcliffe are ready to fight at your disposal. Have you spoken to the revered mother? Has she offered anything? If they are the same as the symbols worn by their priests, well, that would more than suffice. I will send some men to collect the amulets. Please give my regards to Mother Hannah for seeing some sense at last. Ask me whatever you wish. As you wish, Grey Warden. Make a watch over you. Mother Hannah's amulets have greatly bolstered my men's confidence. You couldn't have armed us with any better than our faith in the Maker. There is still time before the sun goes down. If you have not yet spoken to Murdoch, or if there is anything you have planned... Good luck to you then, and may the Maker watch over us all. Coming. Get to your positions. Make ready. Light the traps. Burn these foul creatures.
It's time, men. Know that we fight for the Maker with our arm. Light the traps! Correct plan! Oh, it's so awful. for the Maker and our hour. Light the traps! Burn these foul creatures! The others are coming back. Stop! Ah! Oh! Oh! Ah! 
Dawn arrives, and we survive the night. We are victorious.
And though this victory came at great cost, we must remember none of us would be here were it not for the heroism of these good folk beside me. I thank you, good sir. Truly the Maker smiled on us when he sent you here in our darkest hour. Surely these people deserve some small celebration, don't you think? There is time yet. Let us bow our heads and give honor to those who gave their lives in defense of Redcliffe. Murdoch of Redcliffe, Mayor and beloved father, we salute you. You and so many others who have perished here, walk with he who is your maker. Long may you know the peace of his love. With the Maker's favor, the blow we delivered today is enough for me to enter the castle and seek out your Arl. Be wary and watch for signs of renewed attack. We shall return with news as soon as we are able. Now we've no time to waste. Meet me at the mill. We can talk further there. Yes. You saved us. I can't believe we're alive, and it's finally over. With the money you gave us for Grandfather's sword, we should be able to get to Denerim. I think we have family there we can stay with. Make a watch over you. I'll never forget you. These are terrible times. Just terrible. Good day. There are many gone who we must honor. But we must also remember those who aided us in our darkest hour. Make us blessings upon you, Warden. The deep dark before dawn's first light seems eternal, but know that the sun always rises. 